some of us don't see the move of god in our lives because we don't obey because how then can god move in your life if he's speaking to you and you wouldn't listen to him let me tell you something here things that be happening in your life and it looks like god is not working god is not alive if you only knew god's plan for your life if you only knew where god is taking you to in the next five years you'd understand that it's working in your favor Hi dear, welcome to the third episode of this series that we have been enjoying so much understanding the move of God and how to provoke God's hand upon your life. How to make God stretch out his hand to help you out of any situation that you're in. Oh my gosh, the lessons we have learned from episode one and two has been so amazing. Just a brief recap, right? God's outward hand, yeah, has two sides in his working. The first one is for mercy for his children, right? The second one is also for judgment for their enemies. So when God stretched out his hand, one hand is to release you from the hand of the enemy and the other hand is to judge the enemies, bring plagues upon them and release you. One criteria for the move of God to be released upon your life is obedience. God cannot work in your life if you don't obey. If you don't obey his leading, if you don't obey his teaching, if you don't obey his instructions, if you don't obey his voice. In fact, a lot of times I put it to you that some of us don't see the move of God in our lives because we don't obey. Because how then can God move in your life if he's speaking to you and you wouldn't listen Today's to him? Today's teaching, we're going deeper into the book of Exodus chapter 8. We've been studying the plagues that God brought upon the land of Egypt when he was speaking to them to release his children and they were turning deaf ears because their king was hardened. So we've studied the first two plagues. Let's get to the third plague. This is a very interesting one. When God releases frogs upon the land. God had told Moses and Aaron, I want you to go to Pharaoh when he's even going to the Nile, right? and stretch your your rod upon the nile and command frogs to come and i'm telling you frogs will, will come all over the, the land in fact frogs did not only come from the nile the frogs feel just because pharaoh did not release the israelite from the land god sent frogs to fill up the whole land even their bedrooms their houses their beds the whole land everywhere they had frogs but now listen to what happened when Aaron stretch forth his road and frogs began to fill up the Nile. Pharaoh also tells his magician to do the same. This is verse 7. Let's go to it. Let's read Exodus 8 from verse 7. Listen, it says, But the magicians, the soothsayers, and the priests did the same thing with their secret arts and enchantments and brought up more frogs on the land of Egypt. Aaron had done his own and frogs were coming. Well, Pharaoh was like, okay, my magicians, do your own too. And the magicians did their own and frogs came now to pharaoh and even you know this these men they think they've done something but what they don't know is that they even inflicted more pain upon their lives because check it right if frogs had come to your land what they should be doing is taking away the frogs from their land but because they want to prove that now nah, men we are good we don't care about this your god they went to bring even more frogs upon their land a lot of times when the enemy is moving in your life you don't know that it is working in your favor but how will you know if you don't work with god if god doesn't speak to you if you don't understand god's voice if you don't pay attention to god how can you tell that it's working in your favor it's like the case of jesus it had been written the plan was for jesus to come reach the whole world and die and go to hell and get the key to sin and death and come out and ascend to heaven but the devil thinking he was smart felt no 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 this man is going too far i'm gonna kill him i'm gonna kill him and the devil now you know walked with his agents and they killed jesus but what he did not know was that it was all part of the plan a lot of times let me tell you something here eh? things that be happening in your life and it looks like God is not working. God is not alive. If you only knew God's plan for your life, if you only knew where God is taking you to in the next five years, you'd understand that it's working in your favor. I always look at things in five years' time. When things are happening to me right now, I will tell myself, Omi, in five years' time, what would you say about yourself? This thing that is paining you this much, in five years' time, will it pain you this much? Then you begin to spend time with God and you begin to tell him to show you the future. Because if, if you don't have the view of God, if you don't see things the way God sees them, God says, your ways are not my ways. 
your thoughts are not my thoughts you think it has to go this way you think because you have this job you have to be the person to be promoted in this job and god is saying to you i put something in you that you're supposed to push to the world but you can't do your own business because you're scared of failing and god is like i'm in you you can't fail and so god is making everything uncomfortable for you to leave that job so that you can start your own thing but you're scared you're there you wouldn't even start a lot of time when the enemy is moving, you think the enemy is doing something great. He's not. It's all part of the plan. That's why as you're a child of God, you got to spend time with the word. Like it is important. You have to pray. You have to ask God, what do you want me to do? What are you speaking in my life? Anyways, let's go back to our story. Let's read verse 8 and see what happened to show you how foolish the enemy is moving. But you don't know that he's foolish. Now verse 8 of chapter 8 of Exodus. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said to them, Plead to the Lord that he may take away the frogs from the land and from me and my people, and I will let your people go so that they can sacrifice to the Lord. Now, Pharaoh has realized that, ah, we've been so foolish. Why are they foolish? Because they thought they were doing something powerful, but they were not. Because now, they, these sorcerers have brought more frogs to the land. Now he's calling Moses and Aaron and saying, please, help me beg your God that he takes away this frog. I promise you, once the frog goes like this, I will release the Israelite. They will go. They will go and serve God. Moses now says, okay, tell me, when do you want the frogs to go? Pharaoh says, please, tomorrow, tomorrow. Moses says, no problem. Moses now goes to, a, you know, the corner and he cries out to God. And as he cried out to God, the next day, just as Moses had told Pharaoh, the next day, the frogs left the land. Let's read verse 10. Then Pharaoh said, tomorrow, Moses replied, may it be as you say, so that you may know without any doubt and acknowledge that there is no one like the Lord our God. I told you earlier in episode one, God does things. He moves for his namesake. The reason God is going to move in your life is just for his name's sake. You need to position yourself when you're working with God. Position yourself and tell God, God, you're going to save me for your name's sake. How do you position yourself that God will save you for his name's sake? God told Pharaoh from the beginning, let my people go so that they might go and worship me. So that they might go and sacrifice for me. As you are right now, what are you doing for God? When last did you have heartfelt worship and it's not even a well last thing you are supposed to be every single day continually worshiping god you're supposed to be spending time worshiping your maker so that anything that is going to obstruct your worshiping god god will be like no nah, i gotta fight i gotta take that thing away i gotta remove the distraction this my child is special to me this my child worships me let the people know that i'm a, I'm a worshiper of god it's not even like eye service no it's like genuinely you spend time to worship god so when last did you worship god really in spirit and in truth and don't tell me on sunday because a lot of times on sunday people even touch their phones can you remember what they taught you on sunday i'm saying your personal relationship with god do you know his voice? Does God know your voice? Or does God know your pastor's voice? Does he know your voice? Does he enjoy your worship? The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. It is the praises of his people, not his pastors, not the church choristers, his people. He wants to dwell in your praises. That's the way to make God walk in your life for his name's sake. Because you are too special to God. It's like anything that happens to you, there's going to be a change in the kingdom. There'll be lesser worship because something made you not smile. The, the heavens has to fight for you. That's how to make God work on your behalf so moses prayed and instantly the next day the frog left but i want you to focus on something so so important that thing important is written in the book of the same chapter we are in verse 15 but when pharaoh saw that there was temporary relief he hardened his heart and would not listen or pay attention to them just as the lord had said temporary release see god's instruction for you and I, his children, is to watch and pray. When you're experiencing a season of calmness, there's not a time for you to just relax. When everything seems to be going well, it's not a time for you to just relax and say, ah, things are going well, I beg. I'm so, oh, you know, I can't be bothered praying. I'm just so happy that I can't pray. Don't be that child of God 
who only prays when things are bad in your life because let me tell you if you are such a person that means you're even steps below the enemy that means the enemy is way ahead of you because when everything is going well the enemy is cooking his things against you and that's the truth i'm not trying to scare you that's just life that's why our father has given us instruction he says what watch and pray how do you watch he says be sober be sober be filled with the holy spirit he did not say watch and pray when things are going bad he says watch and pray because see there was temporary relief relief and pharaoh had in his heart when they when you see that there's someone that has been trying to and nail to pull you down and the person suddenly just comes and says ah i just want to apologize and say i'm sorry yes forgive the person but watch and pray don't just say ah it's true we're not friends now so let's no 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 this person tried everything possible to pull you down watch and pray imagine pharaoh had told moses once god takes away this fraud from my land i promise you i will let them go moses goes to cry out to god i'm sure he's happy that ah finally finally we're going to leave he cries out to god god takes away the frogs from their land guess who goes back to say you people are not going anywhere pharaoh see eh? nothing catches god by surprise and that is the way god wants to build his children god wants to make you to live in life where nothing catches you by surprise. Nothing in this world will ever catch you by surprise if you are watchful and if you are prayerful. How are you watchful? You still spend time with the Bible. Uh -uh. You cannot only read the Bible when everything is bad. That when everything is good, you just abandon the Bible. How? Then how then will God speak to you? How then will God even promote you? How then will God take you from this level to a higher level? How? How then will God tell you, okay, this is what they want to do? Pray, my, my daughter. Fast, my daughter, stand, my daughter. How? How then? Do you know what's happening? The God that sees in the secret is telling you to be watchful and to be prayerful. How are you watchful? Spend time with him. So that when he gives you the radar, you follow immediately. You'll be prayerful immediately. you answer his call immediately. That's the only way. If not, the enemy will just give you temporary relief and you will think, ah, man, I'm relaxed. And he will attack you. But as a child, and, 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 and I'm not trying in any way, shape or form to make you scared. This series is how to understand the workings of God. This is how God works. And this is exactly how the spirit realm works. You have to be smart. You have to walk according to God's leading. You have to walk according to his voice. You have to make yourself, like, let him speak to you and you will listen. And don't forget, if you forget anything, which I pray you don't in Jesus name, amen. Watch and pray, watch and pray. Even if you must talk to that person who had tried to pull you down, cause God said we should forgive, yeah. But be watchful. Before you move, welcome the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, what should I do now? The Holy Spirit is our counselor. He counsels us. So when you don't know what to do, ask the Holy Spirit, should I move? Should I go? Should I stay? What should I do? Speak to me, Lord. Help me to know the steps to take, the moves to make. Get out to watch and pray. In the morning, you read your Bible. Before you read, pray to God and tell God, what message do you have for me today? What would you want me to learn today? Please speak to me, my Father. Then you open your Bible and you read. Watch and pray. Watch and pray, watch and pray, watch and pray. That's the way God is going to guide you. Oh my gosh, this is the end of the episode for today. The first episode of this series will amaze you. God wants to help you expose the... You see this, those silent moves the enemy makes that it always feels like he catches you by surprise. God wants to open it to us. God wants to show us. He wants to reveal to us eh, the plans of the enemies that nothing will ever ever shake you now once he has given you a blessing nothing can counter that blessing in your life that is god's plan episode four will blow your mind don't forget to subscribe to this channel and importantly click the notification bell so that when episode four comes you'll be the first to know about it and your life will be blessed thank you so much for watching no 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 please let's pray before we end Oh, my father, I thank you. I, I, I particularly thank you for teaching me the messages in this word, oh God. And this person, my sister, my brother who's listening, we thank you for your for just revealing unto us the plans of the enemy, oh God. And even you, your plan is more important to me than even what the enemy is doing. Thank you, my father, that, that, that you know, this series is, is helping us to draw closer to you. I pray that this one, as this series is ending, Lord God, we would be the ones who are close to God. We'll have deep intimacy with you. We'll be the ones who watch and pray and pray ceaselessly and pray tirelessly, oh God. 
and our lives will be better and we'll always see your hands stretch out in our lives and you will rescue us from every plan of the enemy oh god i just bless your holy name holy spirit i just thank you for your presence god the father god the son god the holy spirit i give you all glory for today's prayers and today's lessons and for answering answering our prayers in jesus name amen don't forget i love you but god loves you more if you have any question you know, even inquiry, like you, something is bothering you and you need me to help you answer it, send me an email, pennywise1 at gmail.com or a better still, talk to me in the comment section. I really want to hear from you. I love you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.